Next year marks the 100th and 150th anniversaries of Quebec's two most significant Great Famine memorials, Grosseil's Celtic Cross and Montreal's Ship Fever Monument, better known as the Black Stone these days. To celebrate the centenary of the Celtic Cross, the ancient Order of Hibernians is organizing a three-day pilgrimage to Grosseil in August, the centerpiece of which will be a reenactment of the monument's 1909 inaugural ceremony which is expected to draw 2,500 participants and generate commemorative interest across Canada, the U.S., and Ireland. Compared to the voluble centennial celebrations that will be taking place around the cross, the observance of the 150th anniversary of Quebec's other, much older famine monument, the Black Stone, will likely be a relatively muted affair. Just as large-scale commemorations on Grosseil in the first and last decades of the 20th century ensured the Celtic cross cast a long shadow over Montreal's monument, the commemorative events slated for 2009 promised to confirm the island cross as the preeminent memorial to the victims of the 1847 migration. The relatively subordinate place of the black stone in public memory is striking given that Quebec's two famine monuments mark sites that were exposed to the same typhus epidemic in 1847 with equally catastrophic consequences. At least 5,500 Irish newcomers who survived the harrowing transatlantic voyage from Ireland succumbed to the disease while on Grosseil, where they were buried en masse. This tragedy was repeated in Montreal when 75,000 of the Irish migrants who had passed through quarantine on Grosseil were deposited on the city's waterfront by steamers sent up the St. Lawrence. Typhus spread rapidly in the fever sheds of Point St. Charles in Montreal, claiming the lives of 6,000 Irish who were interred in nearby mass graves. Though the experiences of typhus-stricken famine migrants in Montreal and on Grosseil were remarkably similar, the two monuments constructed to preserve their memory took very different forms which are formulating in slow motion (laughs) behind me. These shape the dynamics of famine commemoration in Quebec. Focusing on the monumental meanings ascribed to the Black Stone since the 1897 Famine Jubilee, this paper will show that while Montreal's famine memorials lack the luster of its counterpart on Grosseil, it has a long history as a focal point for famine remembrance. The stone's unpolished appearance, Anglican ownership, and bleak setting in the industrial corridor of southwest Montreal limited its commemorative cachet and left it continually vulnerable to political and commercial incursions. But the efforts of successive generations of Irish Catholic groups to imbue the the boulder with historic significance ensured that it stood its ground, not only as a memorial to Irish migrants in 1847, but as a site central to the construction of Irish Catholic identities over the course of the 20th century. The greatest impediment to Irish Catholics laying claim to Montreal's famine burial site was the very monument that was chosen in 1859 to preserve it from desecration. It took the form of a 30-ton granite boulder that was unearthed during the construction of the Victoria Bridge from a field near the 1847 burial grounds. Though there is some evidence to suggest that Irish laborers involved in the building project were so concerned that the grave site of their compatriots would be forgotten that they demanded their employers erect a monument on the spot, it remains unclear the extent to which the monument was an Irish initiative. What is certain is that the British firm responsible for building the bridge agreed to install the enormous stone on the site but was sure to omit any references to the Irish or the famine in its dedicatory inscription. The inaugural ceremony on December 1, 1859, led by Anglican Bishop of Montreal, Francis Fulford, was a further reminder that the stone was not intended as a memorial to Irish Catholic famine refugees. As Bishop Fulford assured the small crowd in attendance, the monument was erected for one purpose only, to ensure that the immigrants of no particular nation or denomination who were buried on site be preserved from any irreverent usage. But the notable absence of representatives of the Roman Catholic hierarchy at the ceremony was another clear signal that Irish Catholics were not meant to share in this memorial. Relations between Anglo-Protestants and Irish Catholics in the city were already strained at mid-century, and the architects of the monument were not interested in identifying the victims of typhus in 1847 as predominantly Irish Catholic 
and risk creating a site that might lend credence to a nascent movement of radical Irish nationalism, which looked to the famine as evidence of British misgovernment and even genocide. In the decades following its dedication, Irish Catholic Montrealers were slow to express affinity for the massive misshapen tombstone, yet they were increasingly drawn to the famine-era burial site over which it stood guard. From the first recorded Irish collective act of remembrance at the memorial in 1870, when a visiting Irish priest, Father Buckley, was brought to the site and left perplexed by the absence of the word Irish from the monument's dedication, Irish feeling for the stone was at best ambivalent. In 1895, in an effort to make the memorial more identifiably Irish Catholic, the ancient Order of Hibernians attempted to gain control of the site from Anglican authorities, proposing to erect a cross next to the stone. However, the Anglican bishop's refusal to relinquish ownership on the grounds that people of more than one denomination were buried there served as yet another reminder that the Black Stone was never meant to be an Irish Catholic famine memorial, and its Anglican custodians were intent on keeping it that way. Though increasingly disillusioned with the monument and its caretakers, Irish societies in the city were not deterred from laying claim to the memorial site to mark the famine jubilee. On September 19, 1897, 20,000 Montrealers gathered around the Black Stone to listen to speeches recalling the tragedy that struck famine migrants 50 years earlier. While all of the Irish Catholic dignitaries who spoke during the commemorative ceremony insisted upon the sanctity of the burial grounds, they were not shy about expressing their displeasure with the Black Stone. To some, the boulder appeared crude in comparison to the refined bronze and marble statuary that was being erected in Montreal and cities throughout North America at the end of the 19th century. One prominent Irishman, Justice Frank Curran, referred disparagingly to the 1859 memorial as, quote, that primitive rock, unquote. Not only was the stone seen as unworthy as a commemorative object, it was eminently unsuited to the site. In its coverage of the commemorative event, the true witness in Catholic Chronicle, the mouthpiece of Irish Catholics in the city at the time, echoed a sentiment that resonated throughout the ceremony when it pronounced that the monument, quote, came from strangers' hands and is in no sense an Irish monument, end quote. Apparently, what the site needed was a monument more appropriately dignified in design, one that would, quote, enhance the reputation of Irish people, not only of this city and dominion, but of the Irish race the world over, end quote. 